This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by HelloFresh and by Bespoke Post. Ever since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, much of the world's in-person meetings and communications have switched over to video conferencing. And with it has come all sorts of issues. Uh, the latency just absolutely ruins the flow of conversations. People seemingly still don't know how to mute themselves or set themselves up with decent lighting. And despite the wide availability of inexpensive microphones and headphones, lots of people just continue to rely on their little tiny computers, built-in microphone, and uh, crank their speakers to max volume. So you're just listening to an echo of an echo of an echo. There's also uh, a lot of people are very not tech savvy at all. So it's like they'll they'll bu go out, they'll buy a nice microphone, they'll plug it in, and then the inputs on the di on the back end side of that are still all screwed up. Yep. Or they switch to something even worse. They're There's, like uh, they're like yeah, I got a webcam and a microphone. Um, but instead of switching to the microphone, I accidentally switched to the microphone on the webcam, and uh, well, you could see the confusion. They, yeah. they don't even know how bad they sound. They don't. Mm. And on top of all of that, uh, the boomers in charge of running most of these Zoom meetings often don't even take the most basic steps to ensure that their calls don't get Zoom bombed. With Zoom bombing, uh, usually it's just some randoms popping into the call to shout slurs and swears and be annoying, but sometimes it's much worse. Sometimes the pranksters manage to stream full-on pornography to the call, and sometimes that Zoom call is taking place in the Italian Senate. Uh, and that's just what happened recently, and it wasn't just any old pornography. No. This was porno for gamers, featuring a CGI Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII getting railed, just destroyed from behind, and seeming to enjoy herself quite a lot in the process. Yeah. Uh, we obviously... <laughs> Can't show it to you, I wonder why. Uh, but trust us, uh, this was actually some pretty damn impressive amateur CGI. And we're not even into, the, into this hentai shit. Yeah, I gotta give yeah, credit I, where it's due. For me, it's candy sexual or nothing. I don't even know, it. Oh, oh god. We'll get, we've got more M&M news for you later, <laughs> by the way. A little update to that. But uh, here's Vice with their report on this a very not safe for specifically work incident. Not safe for work, not safe for government. Mm -mm. Someone crashed a virtual event from the Italian Senate on Monday and streamed 3D porn featuring Final Fantasy characters in front of several politicians, academics, and one Nobel Prize winner. The video featured 3D porn of Final Fantasy VII character Tifa Lockhart getting it from behind. A few seconds of the video played before the speaker realized what was happening and organizers started trying to remove the person streaming the video. Quote, about the results of the medical and scientific research, together with their fast accessibility and their reliability, one speaker says, before Japanese words and moaning interrupt, and the porn appears on screen. There's a person that has snuck in. I apologize. If the other director can please help me kick out this person, one of the event organizers said. Monday's event, held at Palazzo Giustinani in the Italian Senate, was titled, For a Transparent PA, Open Data for the Political Decision Maker. Present were a mix of politicians from Italy's Five Star Movement Party, as well as physicist and academic Giorgio Parisi, who won the Nobel Prize 2021 for physics, and several other economics, sociology, information technology, and communications experts, according to local news reports. Senator Maria Laura Mantovani told Italian news outlet Adam Kronos that she was reporting the incident to the police. This, I. I <laughs> Would it only be so perfect if it played out, it, it sounds in my head like it's playing out exactly like any 90s movie where uh, a, a bunch of like uptight guys are like, oh, oh, and then like the two people you don't expect to enjoy it, like a really old professor with a bow tie and glasses, mm. and then like a, a, like a typically uptight businesswoman are both just like, like the woman's like this, like, oh, and the professor is like, oh, let me get a better look at this. So, yeah. in my mind, everyone had a lot of fun with this, but it, it, it doesn't sound as if it went over that well. I mean, this is Italy we're talking about. Very uptight. No, not sexually. Yeah, oh they, yeah. They had, uh, they had the horniest president in modern True. history for yeah. a long time there. Yeah. Bunga bunga. <laughs> uh, so the porno perpetrator remains unidentified, but this incident has brought lots of attention to animator Drock, uh, the artist behind the smut that screened in the Italian Senate, who has quite the back catalog of lewd video game animations. Drog uh, tweeted of the incident, I feel honored, and <laughs> told Polygon, I found it quite funny, got a good laugh out of it. I actually have no idea what the interrupted stream was about. This incident has, of course, become a meme already within the hentai community, with various examples of Italian-themed fan art involving Tifa Lockhart. Also, uh, don't feel too bad for the Italians who were subjected to pornography against their will. As Elliot said, Italy is one of the horniest countries on Earth. 
as evidenced by this statue recently erected to commemorate a failed 1850s uprising that left 300 dead, which has mainly been noteworthy for its excessively well-defined ass. Yeah. It's a real That's Italy's ass. Very sexy statue commemorating a uh, massacre of villagers doing an uprising. Yeah. 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 We, Sales of Final Fantasy have skyrocketed in yeah, this province. Yeah. People, maybe uh, maybe if our Confederate statues weren't a bunch of old, dusty old men, mm -hmm. and they were sexy uh, southern women wearing the sheerest possible material, Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe people would feel differently about our statues. Yes. They're on to something over there. Yeah. I mean, I think we can all agree that the Statue of Liberty needs a butt lift. Yeah. Come on. You've come a long way, baby. <laughs> the shackles, the shackles of injustice were broken over that woman's ass. Yeah, yeah. her physique is very outdated. Mm -hmm. so that's a 1880s physique, if I've ever seen one. Yes, she she needs to be modernized. Yeah, <laughs> we need to make the Statue of Liberty sexy. Yeah. If they can take it away from the green M and M, they can give it to the green woman. Do you think there's like Rule 34 of the Statue of Liberty? Absolutely, there's, there's got to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, it's on you to find it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, in other international news, the very small and very isolated nation of Tonga recently experienced one of the most powerful volcanic eruptions in recent history, with the blast estimated to be equal to around 10 megatons of TNT, or 500 times as powerful as the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Uh, the shockwave from the blast traveled all the way around the world and caused large tsunamis throughout Tonga and destroyed undersea communications cables. And so due to Tonga's isolation in the middle of the Pacific and the fact that the entire place was covered with a giant cloud of ash for several days, Tonga was basically completely cut off from the rest of the world. On top of that, the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic has made the international humanitarian response a little bit tricky. So it's going to be a while before the full extent of the damage is even known. But the, so far, not looking great. The images, like the satellite images from this were... It's nuts. Intense. Crazy. So yeah, things are pretty fucked over in Tonga. But out of all that horror comes a story of survival that sounds almost impossible. A disabled middle-aged man got sucked out to sea by a tsunami and somehow managed to survive in the open ocean for 27 hours before being rescued. Here's the telegraph with the story. Lasala Falau, who has walking difficulties, had been painting his home and was unable to escape when giant waves topping six meters struck his tiny island of Atata after a massive nearby volcanic eruption. The waves destroyed homes and eventually sucked him into the dark water on Saturday night. He told Tongan radio station Broadcom Broadcasting after a five-day communication blackout was restored. As Mr. Falau drifted further from land, battered by the waves, he could hear his son calling for him. But he did not respond as he did not want to put him in danger, he explained in a translation by radio station editor George Lavaca. The truth is no son can abandon his father, but for me, as a father, I kept my silence for if I answered him, he would jump in and try to rescue me, he said. He would come and we would both suffer. He added, it stayed with my mind, if I can cling to a tree and if anything happens and I lose my life, searchers may find me and my family can view my dead body. Mr. Falau managed to find the strength to swim 4.7 miles to the main island of Tonga Tapu, reaching the shore 27 hours later at about 10 p.m. on Sunday, astounding locals with his heroic tale that later went viral on social media. Real life Aquaman, said one post on Facebook, referring to the comic book and film character. He's a legend, said another post. Yeah, so he wasn't even rescued. He rescued his damn self. Yeah. He got sucked off his island. He's like, all right, well, I guess I'll just uh, ride this current to the nearest island, five miles away. And a very responsible thing to do by not putting others in danger when you know you're in a situation that could almost certainly result in both of you being in the same I'm gonna amount of danger. I'm going to shut the fuck up because my reckless idiot son's going to come in after me and then we're going to both end up dead. There's a lot of so situations. Hopefully throughout. I can grab onto a tree or something so my corpse, they can find it later. Lots of situations throughout history of someone uh, trying to save someone else and just ending up fucking both of them. Yeah. So... So yeah, this dude, and yeah, he can barely walk. It's the fact that he was able to <laughs> tread water and swim. Well, that's, it's like a, Right after a tsunami? It's pretty, like you go blind and you get that super hearing. You lose your legs, you got... I guess. Super arms. That's, that's the way superheroes go. Yeah. And this man is a superhero. He, I mean, he is. He saved himself. He did. This guy is, uh, he's obviously never paying for beer ever again. Mm -hmm. um, nor should he, but... The situation in Tonga remains really fucking bad, so if you're feeling generous, there's a lot of organizations you can donate to, most of which are based in Australia. Uh, there's Care Australia, the Australian Red Cross, Save the Children, Oxfam, UNICEF, 
and many, many more. So we will leave a link to a list of them down in the description. But now, let's move on to another rescue story that's uh, not quite as high stakes, but uh, still sounds almost made up. Uh, a little tiny doggy in southern England was saved from being sucked out to sea by the tide through some very clever engineering. Uh, here's the Guardian. As the tide rose, it began to look perilous for Millie, the Jack Russell Whippet Cross, who had defied the efforts of police, firefighters, and coast guards to pluck her from treacherous mudflats. So the rescuers had to think imaginatively, and came up with the idea of attaching a sausage to a drone and hoping the scent of the treat would tempt Millie to safety. It worked gloriously, and Millie has been reunited with her grateful owner after following the dangling sausage to higher, safer ground. Millie disappeared after slipping her lead in Havant, Hampshire, and uh, after frantic public appeals was spotted on the mudflats, in danger of being engulfed by the tide. She resisted efforts to encourage her to a safer spot until a drone pilot suggested attaching food to one of the unmanned aerial vehicles that had been used to track the dog. It was a crazy idea, said Chris Taylor, the chair of the Denmead Drone Search and Rescue Team. But they pressed ahead, and after checking Civil Aviation Authority regulations and the MTOW, maximum takeoff weight, of their machines, the rescuers calculated that they could attach a single sausage to a drone. <laughs> Taylor said, One of the local residents on the beach where we were flying from supplied us with the sausages. I think they were from Aldi. The woman cooked them up for us, and we attached them with a string. To the joy of the rescuers, Millie took the bait. There's a lot of time being wasted in this operation to save this dog. For, like, clearing regulations, uh, opening up a book to figure out what the maximum towing weight was, uh, waiting for the sausage to be cooked. Well, uh, yeah. I don't think the dog really cares whether the sausage is raw or not, but yeah, it well, might the, give him a stomach The ache. aroma, uh, yeah. you know, uh, help with the true. aroma. But yeah. it is it is funny that they're like, oh, we've got an emergency on our hands. Let's take 30 minutes to figure this out. Well, it sounds like they had already wasted quite a lot of time oh, exhausting you, every other option. I believe you, because even the option that worked took them forever. Yeah, well, it worked. It, true. Look, who am I? I didn't rescue a dog with a sausage hooked to a drone, so I don't know. Yeah. So dogs, you know, if you know dogs, you know they're terrible about knowing what's good for them. Get off the beach, you're gonna die! They always want to do the nah, opposite. I think I'll do the opposite of yeah. that. And yeah, they're not very receptive to having a bunch of strangers chasing after them when they're already terrified, but, you know, dogs always want their treats. Especially if they're food that's actually intended for human consumption. That's the, the holy grail. Yeah. My dog, I feed her her slop, and she's just like, you motherfucker. Yeah. What do you got over there? Can I have some? Yes. No. So yeah, this was a brilliant strategy that uh, hopefully we see a lot more of in the animal rescue business. Or the human rescue business. Yeah, people love sausage too. Yeah, that's how that guy from that island got back to shore. I just followed the scent. Yes. The delicious sausage. Mm. I haven't had Tongan food, but if it's anything like other Polynesian food, it's probably fucking delicious. Probably great, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sausage dangling by a long string from a drone was able to do what the combined efforts of the police, fire department, and Coast Guard couldn't do over what must have been several hours. So uh, I think it's a great idea. The next time a dog gets trapped somewhere, they know exactly how to handle it. They need to do it on humans too. Although, for some reason, I feel like it'd be less humane on humans. Like they would just like, it would be like a lasso and they'd just pull people back. Yeah. People have a lot less patience for other people. They do. Mm -hmm. But speaking of animals and their appetites, Local Southern California chop salad chain Chop Stop will soon be answering a question that has long beguiled even the scientific community. Who would win at a salad eating contest? A human woman or a big fucking rabbit? Now, <laughs> I keep seeing these fucking ads. <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, this isn't just any human woman we're talking about here. This is a 27 year old professional competitive eater, Reina Huang. And as for the rabbit, well, all we know is that it's named Honey Bunny. AKA Mega, and it's a pretty it's a pretty damn big rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. That rabbit knows how to eat. But here's Chop Stop's description of the event posted back in December on Facebook. Who can devour more chop salad in ten minutes? In one corner we have famous competitive eater Reina Huang, who has her sights set on a world record of eating four pounds of salad at this event. That's so much salad. It's a lot of salad. That's that's it's very not very cal calorie dense no. or weight dense, so yeah. Uh, in, other in the other corner, we have Honey Mega Bunny, a heavyweight Flemish giant rabbit whose sole mission in life is to consume produce. This is the duel to settle the age-old question. Are salads really rabbit food? Witness this earth-shattering event in person, or watch it live-streamed on ChopStop.com. I do want to see how this goes. 
But yeah, the contest was scheduled for January 11th. Unfortunately, like so many of our best laid plans, the Omicron variant had other ideas, and the event was canceled when Raina Huang herself tested positive for COVID just days before the fight was scheduled to take place. That rabbit sent a, a missionary out to get him, mm -hmm. get her. Man, so many spectators who were looking forward to the Woman vs. Rabbit event kind of thought that this timing was maybe a bit too convenient for Raina and accused her of faking her COVID diagnosis to get out of uh, having to lose an eating contest to a rabbit. Yeah? But, uh, who knows? The fight is now back on, thankfully, and is scheduled for Tuesday, February 1st at 11 a.m. Pacific at the Glendale oh, Chop Stop location local. and live on Chop Stop's website. So, hopefully no other surprises come up before then and we can finally, after all these years, after all these centuries, find out whether a woman can out-eat a giant rabbit. I hope this goes forward as planned because this is very exciting stuff. Uh, yeah. I will be tuning in. <laughs> I feel like she'll win because, uh, like, humans have a bigger mouth. Yeah, I mean, are rabbits known for eating fast? And the rabbit has no idea that it's supposed to be yeah. going for speed. I mean, unless they're, like, starving the rabbit a little bit before the fight. Well, that would be inhumane, Elliot. It would be, but, I mean, human, versus, a lot riding on human versus animal eating contests are also sort of kind of inhuman, maybe. Yeah, so, I mean, I want to see, like, the funny thing is going to be when they wheel out this salad. Yeah, because it is going to be salad. Is it going to be one salad. tub of four pounds of salad, or is it going to be multiple bowls? Because that'll be the difference. It's like a head of lettuce is like what, a quarter pound. Because if, <laughs> if this rabbit sees four pounds of uh, lettuce, it's gonna it's gonna have a heart attack. Oh my god, I've gone to heaven. Yeah, gotta be careful. Yeah. Uh, anyway, speaking of food, we've seen no shortage of examples over the last couple of years of food companies releasing weird limited edition versions of their products, seemingly designed to disgust everyone like pink Kraft macaroni and cheese, Peeps, fl Peeps flavored Pepsi, uh, chili dog flavored G Fuel. You get the picture. But now the geniuses over at Oscar Mayer have really gone and done it this time with officially branded Oscar Mayer bologna moisturizing face masks. Oh. Uh, as a little kid, you may have chosen to bite uh, eye and mouth holes into a slice of processed meat to wear it as a skin mask and make the people around you question whether you're going to grow up to be a serial killer or Dwight Schrute. Yeah. But now, that's an actual product that you can buy. Great. Mm -hmm. So, to be clear, we're not sure what the pros and cons of wearing a piece of processed meat on your face are. It's probably not great, but not worse terrible. Than better. Uh, but these masks apparently aren't even real meat. Boo. And the package explicitly warns wearers not to eat it. Rather, Oscar Mayer partnered with an established Korean face mask company on a mask that's packaged like bologna and looks like bologna, but isn't actually bologna. It doesn't even smell like bologna. Bullshit. It smells like bullshit. This is all bullshit. Mm -hmm. It also doesn't really... It doesn't look like meat, but neither does the real thing. Da -da 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 -da. Hey. This shit's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, regardless, apparently this was such an enticing product that Oscar Mayer's entire stock of bologna-inspired face masks sold out less than 24, 24 hours after going on sale. But uh, they're already back in stock again, so uh, great job, everyone, for encouraging more of this nonsense. I mean, the first 24-hour stock was completely bought on spec by resellers who were like, if this is all they've got, somebody yeah. out there is going to want it, and they're gonna buy it for more than I paid for it. And they probably all eBay. they probably all got real sad when Oscar Mayer was like, We heard you loud and clear. We have restocked all of the bologna face masks. Yep. No need to go down to the local produce aisle. We've got the real thing right here. Yeah. So I see this as a win in the battle against scalpers. Good. Anytime yeah. a company can instantly refresh its stock after they buy it all on speculation, it's it it's wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you bologna scammers get. Yeah. For all this bologna you've been up to. Now it's time for some just desserts. Mm hmm But speaking of wearing human skin on your face as a mask, that's something the weirdos who follow QAnon believe that Hillary Clinton once did. And it's not even their most outlandish belief. Their most outlandish belief would probably be that John F. Kennedy and his son, John F. Kennedy Jr., are both alive and well and living incognito working to restore Donald Trump to the presidency. And just for reference, John F. Kennedy would be 104 years old if he'd somehow managed to not die back in 1963, which is the perfect age to run for president again. Which, like, he definitely, like, I, I, I love that of all deaths, like, they're like, this one didn't actually happen. It's like, it was fucking... In front of everyone. <laughs> in front of thousands of people. His head fucking exploded. There's video evidence of it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, a particularly insane sect of Q weirdos are convinced that the Kennedys will reveal themselves any day now and have just been hanging out around Dallas for over two months waiting for it to happen. And yeah, they are still at it, and they are still seeing resurrected dead people everywhere they look. 
here's Vice. Having spent the last two and a half months holed up in Dallas awaiting the reappearance of John F. Kennedy and his son, a group of two dozen or so QAnon followers, led by an anti-Semitic guru named Michael Protzman, made the 1,000-mile trip to hear Trump speaking at his first major rally of 2022. Ahead of the rally, Protzman, or Negative 48 as he's known to his followers, predicted the event would feature some major revelations. While most QAnon followers criticized Trump for talking about returning in 2024 rather than trying to overturn the 2020 election result, Prosman told his followers that something huge happened in the desert on Saturday night. In an audio chat with his followers on Sunday, Prosman claimed that Carrie Lake, the former TV anchor who is now running for Arizona governor, had just finished speaking but was brought back up on stage by Trump in order to show people that Trump was in fact JFK in disguise. Oh. The basis for Prosman's unhinged claim? Trump appeared to be shorter than he should have been. Uh. While the number of people around Protzman in Dallas has dwindled from several hundred to a few dozen in recent weeks, he still commands a huge online following, and some of those watching the rally online claim to have spotted JFK Jr. and his wife, Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, who died in the same plane crash as her husband, in the crowd. Separately, a rapper called Prime Minister, who is one of Protzman's acolytes, claimed that two people seen behind Trump at the rally were actually Tupac and Kobe Bryant. This is, this is nuts. All of the famous dead people are in one room. Yeah. It's crazy. And uh, I, the, the Kobe and Tupac one is especially, it's just like, you're, you're racist and you think black people all look the same. No. But then again, these people they, think, they think, they the think white all people white people look yeah, the same so. too. They're just, so. they all have face blindness. Yeah. This I, is a face blindness community that has been radicalized. Be, it would be interesting if that, if that came out to be uh, the like unifying trait of all these QAnon people is they just have, they all have face blindness. It's a great, like, you know, ejector seat, emergency thing to pull if you're like, ah, shit, I've been, I've actually been deceived. Um, all right, here's the deal. I have face blindness. <laughs> and now I have to act like I have face blindness for the rest of my yeah. life. Who's there? Who is that? <laughs> what are you doing with the hands? <laughs> they have to feel the faces to identify who it is. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, that's not JFK Jr. at all. Oh, I was seeing things again. No. As always, it is fun to laugh at how unhinged these folks are, but this Dallas sect of QAnon has definitely taken the online cult of QAnon and crossed over into real-life actual cult with people who have completely abandoned their families to wait for the second coming of JFK because a guy with a messiah complex told them to. He's already previously made comments comparing his group to the cult at Waco, which is never a good sign. No. So... Yeah, it's probably only a matter of time until something real bad happens with these people. And also, why would JFK, his first appearance back in the public, be in Dallas of all places? I know that's, that's where he was killed, but you would assume, I don't know, on a yacht in Massachusetts or something? Yeah. Yeah. And why would he, like, ugh, none of it makes sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. Like, you can't, you can't reason with any of this. No. There's no good faith <laughs> reading of any of this nonsense. So... Yeah, but yeah. Uh, while the Q people may be insane, there's still only a few steps removed from the mainline American conservative strain of insanity. And we might as well update you on something that we predicted would happen in this week's episode of News Dump, and then totally happened, almost exactly as we predicted, before we even managed to get the episode yeah, while uploaded. editing, yeah. Tucker Carlson is very upset about the Mars Candy Company making the M&Ms less fuckable. And look, here you go, just watch this. The other big change is that the brown M&M has, quote, transitioned from high stilettos to lower block heels. Also less sexy. That's progress. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. That's the goal. When you're totally turned off, we've achieved equity. They've won. Now, of course, this is all being framed as a candy company appeasing the woke mob, even though literally nobody asked for this and no one cares. Our take on it was that, just like Weber Grills and their unfortunately timed meatloaf recipe, these brands are so terrified of the cancel culture boogeymen that they are preemptively responding to non-existent backlash. But it turns out, at least for the M&Ms, that we were only half right about that, and Mars has a much more fucked up reason to want to dominate the headlines with something that no one asked for. Uh, they, along with Hershey and Nestle, are currently being sued by a group of people in Africa who claim that they were trafficked as children to work as slaves on the cocoa farms that these companies buy their cocoa from. So now when you search for Mars Inc., you get a bunch of bullshit about M&Ms instead of the horrific crimes that they're accused of being complicit in. 
And I, I must have taken them like just o just under a year to figure out a strategy to uh, deflect this because yeah, this this was like a, a big news story in February of last yeah. year or March. And uh, they're like, what do we do? Well, you know, art takes time. We lay low for a while. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, we deploy yeah. the uh, boss bitch M&M. &M. I mean, it, yeah, it's... And the lesbian M&M. &M. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's similar to how, like, anytime news comes about, out about, like, Tesla cars blowing up or getting recalled, like, Elon finds a way to put himself back in the news yeah. to cover for it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's 21st century marketing 101. Yeah. And look, like... And like, we all fell for it. If they, if they would just hire someone that was, uh, I don't know, fresh out of college, they would realize that all they have to do is just shut the fuck up yeah. for like 24 hours and something else terrible will shut happen. Shut the fuck up and also um, don't hire uh, slave labor. I mean, that would be the initial good idea there would be to not do that. The, cocoa, the whole cocoa business is fascinating. First of all, the cocoa plant looks like something H.R. Giger Design. It's disgusting. It's fucking weird. It's yeah. like there's multiple layers. It looks like an alien, like baby egg. You got to crack open the main outside one, and then there's these little pods inside Very and shit. Yeah, it's real weird. But then uh, you watch these videos, of the making of it, and they're like they'll ask the workers doing this shit, like, "Have you ever actually had chocolate?" And they're like, "No, <laughs> I've never ever eaten chocolate candy." Well, why would you? It's ruined your life. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It makes sense. Is uh. Don't answer this question, but is Girardelli on the up and up? Because that's what I enjoy. I don't know. I know they're not, I'm pretty sure they're not a part of this lawsuit. Good. But, um, I mean, Coco kind of all comes from the same place. And as we all know, there are there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Well, so yeah. we're all guilty of everything. But, I mean, you would you would hope. <laughs> some, some forms of consumption are definitely more ethical than others. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You, you would hope, uh, at the bare minimum, there would not child be labor. child slavery <laughs> yeah. involved. That's, yeah. uh, I feel like even the most capitalistic uh, American would probably agree with that sentiment. Yeah, if they were aware of it and made aware of it on a constant basis. <laughs> yeah. um, if you had to choose between uh, slave-produced cacao or whatever, or non-slave-produced, which would you choose? Well, whichever one's cheaper, of course. Oh, my God. Uh, fingers crossed on Girardelli, though. Yeah. No surprises. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be proved wrong really quickly. Anyway, before we move on to the headlines half of the show, this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. The new year is a great time to focus on what's important to you, uh, whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your wellness. HelloFresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm-fresh produce that arrives within a week, so you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you the wait in long lines and ensuring that you don't waste money on excess food. One thing that's great about HelloFresh is knowing exactly how long the recipes will take to cook, and some delicious sounding recipes on next week's menu that come in at 30 minutes or less include sizzling hoisin shrimp with ginger scallion rice and roasted green beans, and Baja shrimp quesadillas with salsa fresca, lime crema, and hot sauce. Shrimp's back on the menu, boys. Mm -hmm. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird16 and use code WeeklyWeird16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, that is up to 16 free meals and three free gifts by going to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird16 and using code WeeklyWeird16. This episode is also sponsored by Bespoke Post. This winter, as you get back into the swing of things, Bespoke Bespoke Post is here with a new seasonal lineup of must-have Box of Awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From autumn craft beers to cozy threads and camping gear essentials, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. Some of Bespoke Post's newest boxes include the Scorch Box, featuring hot sauces from small brands across the country, and the Over Easy Box, which comes with a cast iron skillet, Bloody Mary mix, and everything you need to make pancakes. Mm. Mm. Maybe mix those two boxes together, have a real spicy breakfast. <laughs> yeah. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Plus, 
with each box of awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up and coming brand. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code WEIRD at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD for 20% off your first box. All right. And, uh, yeah. Time for headlines. I've uh, got a couple, couple American gun culture headlines uh, to kick things off. We're still doing the gun culture thing here? It's oh, 2022. Yeah. Americans, uh, I don't think they're going to get tired of this gun shit anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, first headline. Woman charged after threatening to bring every single gun loaded and ready if her children had to wear masks at school. No mask mandates. My child, my children will not come to school on Monday with a mask on. All right. That's not happening. And I will bring every single gun loaded and ready to, I, I will call every. Okay, that's three minutes. You've you gone past your time. I just love people putting themselves at the mercy of the law over the most petty shit. It's like with these people that uh, they choose to get banned from like ever flying again because uh, they don't like how the stewardess ask them to wear a mask. Like I, 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 what, what do you think is gonna fucking happen if you threaten to bring an arsenal of guns to a school if they do the mask mandate that they're talking about doing? How do you think that's gonna work out for you? Uh, yeah, I think that they just assume they they have like a martyr complex. Yeah, I mean, you, you could like, ask, like look how dedicated I am to this. You could ask the same thing about the people that stormed the Capitol and just like did took no steps at all to like conceal their identity or anything. It's like Republican like, jackass. Yeah, it's it's a Hey, weird, watch this. It, it is a weird like sense of entitlement. Yeah. And it's all performative. It's like this the, for the found, most part. The founding <laughs> fathers of the insurrectionists. I haven't read the Constitution since I was a child, but I'm pretty sure the founding fathers said that uh, with the second amendment you are allowed to th not only bear arms but threaten to use them against anyone at any time. Yes. And to to you know, prosecute someone for that would be frankly unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. So uh, so yeah, if you make my son wear a mask, I will shoot you. <sighs> Fucking hell. Wisconsin GOP lawmakers approve bill allowing 18-year-olds to carry guns at schools, churches. <sighs> what could go wrong? There's a lot of there's well, there's going to be a lot of good guys with a gun out there. A lot of very good guys. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of cool guys. With and guns. then when it, if any if any shred of confusion happens at any point in time, I mean, when they could be good guys, bad guys, middle of the road yeah. guys. The point is, they're all men, and they're shooting each other. Yeah. Thankfully, it sounds like this is probably going to get vetoed by the governor of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. otherwise, this could have become a law. You would like I think technically you wouldn't be allowed to carry your gun into the classroom, you'd have to leave it in your car, but... Now your gun locker next to your regular locker. Yeah, um, you know, uh, parking lot's always the safest place to be at a high school. Not, n never any, like, weird aggression coming out in the parking lot of a high school. So, um, yeah, would have been an interesting experiment for sure. Um, yeah. But I'm glad they're not doing it. Yeah. Yet. Mm -hmm. Although, some states somewhere else probably will go ahead and just be like, you know what? That was a great idea they had up in Wisconsin. Though, once again, you are forgetting about the rural parts of this country, Elliot, where you not only have to shoot your dinner on the way home, yeah. but also defend your family from 30 to 50 feral hogs right. at any moment in time. The hogs are everywhere. Yes. So, we can't forget all of those people. Yeah. The liberals just want the hogs to eat my kids. And um, yeah. you know what I have to say about that? I say, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> all right, let's go, Brandon. See, it doesn't even work. And you know what's great? I haven't really heard it as much since he said it. No, they're still doing it. You sure? The the Protsman guy, the QAnon guy, he, he was rocking some Let's Grow Brandon merch at the Trump rally. Well, they're just trying to get their money out of it. They ordered it. Yeah. It took. It's like with any like meme shirt that you see online. By the time you get it, the meme is over. Yeah, you got your... But you got to wear it. Fifi coffee cup in yeah. like 2020. <laughs> yeah. You got to get your money out of it. So they're like, everyone, hey, we're still doing Let's Go Brandon for at yeah. least two to three more months. Uh, it's, these, it's this damn supply chain. I, I, just, I had the thought the other day, like, there's got to be a loads of conservative men named Brandon. Yeah. Gotta, this must have been a very difficult time for them. It's like, yeah. honey, I don't think it's going to work. I just like, why can't you just change your name? <laughs> I don't want people calling me a Brandon lover. Yeah. Even though, uh, because my husband's Brandon and I love him. 
So it, it's probably not a fun time to be named Brandon. Uh, yeah. yeah. Representative Madison Cawthorn cleans gun during veterans hearing. Jesus Christ. This guy is such a fucking douchebag. Yeah, he is. Uh, so th this is a hearing over uh, like potential VA benefits for uh, victim of, victims of burn pits. This is the thing we've been doing in Afghanistan and Iraq like forever. They just burn their trash. Mm -hmm. And whoever gets assigned to burn duty is just breathing in fucking toxic chemicals. Yeah. It's been uh, disastrous for the health of a lot of the, the soldiers that come back. And so they're talking about, like, oh, how do we make this right? And this fucking jackass, Madison Cawthorn, just cleaning his gun like on camera, making sure it's in the shot. And I, I'm pretty sure, because they reached out to his office, and they're like, what was that about? And he's like, his representative was like, uh, you know, guns and uh, veterans. Uh, but what's more American like than Like Madison that? Cawthorn to know anything about fucking being a veteran. He Didn't he, like, flunk out of, like, one year of military-adjacent college? Uh, he, uh, he, he claims, he's like, oh, I was, all, I was all set to go to West Point before my accident. And people looked into it, and they're like, no, that's, uh, that was a lie. And also, like... Also, everything else this guy fucking said is a lie. It's almost like he's a uh, pathological liar. Yeah, well, and uh, the uh, very beginning of his campaign, it was pushed forward as though he was crippled in combat or something. Yeah, very interesting, like, lies by omission. No, he fucking partied too hard and rolled yeah. a car. Yeah, he went to spring break and <laughs> fell asleep at the wheel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or his friend did, I don't know. But uh, And now he's cleaning guns at the VA meeting. But yeah, I think he thought, like, this, the real troops at the hearing would think he was cool. Yeah. And they absolutely did not. Yeah, they, it's like wearing uh, a cowboy hat in Texas or they, something. Uh, they were all just like, what the fuck is this shit? This is very disrespectful. This, this, this person is ignoring every gun safety protocol. We're talking about chronic health problems that we're experiencing <laughs> due to uh, bad practices. Can you please listen to us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking douchebag. Yeah, I hear you. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Top Florida health official on leave over support for vaccination. Florida wins again. Yeah, this, this guy's in charge of... He's the health department for Orange County, which is where Orlando, Orlando and yeah. whatnot is. Uh, and he, they're not allowed to do vaccine mandates in Florida, obviously. Mm -hmm. But he, I guess he's aware of how many people are vaccinated at his workplace. And he's in charge of this department. So he just sent an email being like, guys, only 50% of you people at the health department are vaccinated. This is pathetic. And uh, apparently that's too political. Yeah. He's getting very political by telling the employees of the local health department that they should get vaccinated against a disease. You, you want to see something Whoa there, buddy. <clears throat> like very interesting that's playing out now, like a little, real test case for whether or not people actually care or, or whatever is uh, Carhartt is going forward with their yeah. vaccine mandate. Uh, I and saw they a bunch are, of people burning their hats and yeah, shit. Yeah, very traditionally a uh, yeah. blue collar brand, yeah. although they have expanded into being a uh, fully embracing streetwear now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're like sticking to the vaccine mandate regardless of the need to enforce it. And that's causing a lot of their customers to do very performative burnings. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if that actually like pans out because it's, it's very popular across the board. Oh, it is. Um, so yeah. that'll be interesting. But speaking of like school laws, you see Florida's crazy don't tell anyone you're gay law that they're trying to push through right now? No. And also like... What? Yeah. <laughs> It's it back, don't ask, don't tell for, for high school students. Yes. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And teachers apparently. Like, That's this, fucking horrible. It hasn't passed or anything. What uh, if you're already out? Uh, well, it, teachers can't reference uh, anything like it. it. It's on a sliding scale, apparently, based on the grade. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. It's so fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. God damn it. It's don't ask, don't tell for kids. Uh, we're bringing that shit back. Yeah. Woman takes selfie on top of her car as it sinks into frozen river. Hey, what else are you going to do? Yeah, uh, she's in Canada. She drove on the ice. I don't know why she did it, but that was dumb. And her car cracked through. She, no one's going to believe she this. She climbed out. On, yeah, I mean, I think that was probably it. She's, like, standing on her car. She's like, well, I mean, other than calling for help, can't really do much. So there you go. Peace, guys. It's been real. For insurance purposes. If you don't hear from me, yeah, it's, that's probably it, too. Yeah, because otherwise, once the car goes into the ice, it was like, oh, you crashed. Where is the car? Yeah. Where is it? So uh, good for her. And it all worked out. So I don't know. People were mad at her. Like, oh, typical, typical millennial. Got to always on that phone. But um, yeah, I mean, it worked out. Yeah. And she got probably a pretty sweet selfie. So good for her. Yeah, sure. Police search for Ben Styler after death of Duane Johnson <laughs> in Wodonga. <laughs> 
A man died, Ricky. That, I know, but the headline, it's, uh, look, <laughs> I, I'm only laughing because this asshole who wrote the headline knew exactly what he was doing yeah, these aren't, with the information. These aren't known persons. These are just local individuals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the person, it's not my fault. It's yeah. the person that wrote the headline who was wrong. Yeah. They did it to make me laugh to make me look bad. They did. Yeah. 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 Ben Styler and Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Come on. It's funny. It is. Yeah. It is. Uh, ben Styler is apparently still on the loose. Ugh, watch out. Watch out. He's uh, out there milking everybody's nipples. Yeah. He's, uh, he, you'll, you'll be able to know him because he, he can only turn left. <laughs> or you can only turn right. I don't remember. I haven't seen Zoolander in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, that, so, again, their fault, not mine. Yeah, we're... In the clear. It's not our fault for laughing. Sorry for party rocking. <laughs> Boris Johnson says, Nobody told me number 10 lockdown garden party was against the rules. And number 10 is like the, yeah. it's the PM's office. Mm-hmm. It's their White House, but it just looks like a door. A normal house. And like up until 20 years ago, you could just walk right past it. Yeah. Can't do that anymore. But uh-huh. yeah, uh, this is Boris Johnson doing, this is, this is like if Gavin Newsom, when he went to that restaurant like a fucking idiot, his excuse was, uh, well, I didn't know I couldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Who, someone should have told me that this wasn't a lie. No, he was like, I know, I know that this was in bad taste, and I'm, yeah. like, I'm still just dumb enough to do it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that much of an egomaniac. Yeah. I just fucking went for it anyway. <laughs> Who gives a shit? But Boris Johnson is just like, well, I, how was I to know what the national uh, guidelines were on, on lockdowns? Have you seen my hair? I'm an idiot. Yeah. yeah. What am I, the prime minister? Yeah. It's not my job. So, uh, yeah, he, uh, his approval number is finally not looking so great, but he'll be fine. He always, he always manages to wiggle out of it. He's got that 5% of just, like, wackiness yeah. that you'll never shake off. And that's very, it's very manufactured. It's very deliberate. Mm-hmm. He, he's gotten away with a lot of stuff from just being like, oh, that's Boris. Yeah. Silly old Boris. That maybe Joe Can't Biden comb needs his hair to, right. Joe Biden needs to, like get a little more goofy. He needs to really lean into the old guy thing and not like act like yeah. he's normal. He, if he shits his pants in public, I think his approval ratings will go up. I don't know about shitting his pants, but I mean, George W. Bush, he, he coasted off a lot of the same stuff. Like He definitely played up being a dumb guy more than he actually is. Yeah, it's a, it's a great tactic. It is. Mm-hmm. You disarm your enemy. I'm sure Sun Tzu wrote about this in his Art of War. Yeah. And uh, we're still doing it today. Yes. The last man standing, the court jester. That's right. Mm -hmm. Dead soccer player in coffin scores goal to delight of Chilean fans. Elliot, that man died. Why are you giggling? Because it's funny. They put his coffin on the pitch and they they passed him a ball, but they just kicked it at the coffin at an angle where it went into the goal. Like billions? And then they lifted up the the coffin to celebrate his, his last goal. Perfect. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, I think that's uh, fine. I'm glad they did it this way instead of like, I don't know, rigging up his body like a, like puppet, a puppet or something. <laughs> that would have been much more horrific and grotesque. Yeah. This was tasteful. Mm-hmm. They just put his coffin on the field and kicked a soccer ball at it. It would have been fucked up if they missed though. Yeah. Been really sad. Or if like yeah. the soccer ball broke the coffin. Yeah. Yeah. And then he fell out of the coffin. Yeah. And then the ball, he touched it with his hand and the guy pulled out a card. <laughs> <laughs> Stick the red card in the coffin. Right. Like, and close it back. He has a card for, like, flopping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sick of this game. Everyone just fucking takes falls all the time. He's pretending to be hurt. He's, <laughs> the man is clearly dead. Get so up. feel anything. Gets that shit out and just sprays it for, like, the penalty kick. <laughs> Could have been funnier. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Truck in Pennsylvania with 100 monkeys crashes, some of them missing. Uh, they really uh, put that most important part right there at the end. I think they got all the monkeys back, but mm. this is like, it's funny to picture 100 monkeys in Pennsylvania in the winter, just like, oh, this fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, well, also, I mean, if they thought it was bad inside the truck with 100 uh, monkeys to all cram together, yeah. wait till they're in the frigid cold. Yeah, we're not built for Pennsylvania this. winter. Not built for it. Yeah. But then you, you think of like every outbreak movie and you're like, yeah, a bunch of monkeys in the middle of a pandemic. Probably not great. I mean, look, if they're going to get loose in a place, it's got to be Pennsylvania, so at least it slows them down a little bit. Yeah. 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 Because if they get loose in, like, Florida or something like that, it's over with. You're never going to see those monkeys again. Or your alcoholic beverage that you've been sitting with. They love to drink. They do. (laughs) They can't handle their liquor, though. And then when they get drunk, they they fuck. (laughs) (laughs) They fuck and they fight. That's right. They're just like Floridians. 
They are. Yeah. They should be the national animal. Yep. Not that gator. <laughs> Chinese couple trapped on lockdown date get engaged. There you go. It's not the same couple as last week, though. Oh. There's apparently multiple uh, couples who got locked down together on their first dates. Yeah. The so one last week didn't work out. They're not into each other, but they seem to at least respect each other. But this couple, they're getting married. Good for them. And they did like a relationship speed run. Uh, first date, and then they're living together, coexisting, cooking for each other. Uh, a traumatic uh, experience creates unbreakable bonds. This is definitely going to be a Chinese rom-com, if there is such a thing. Yeah. There's got to be Chinese rom uh, romantic comedies, right? Sure. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, this will be one, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, good. I'm yeah. glad there's at least one happy ending out there for the people that got trapped together. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. If you haven't already, uh, please check out our video on the desexualization of M&M's candy. Now, someone also drew us as M&M's ourselves. Yeah. Um, Looking pretty good. Looks great. Yep. Also got a lot of, got this piece of great fan art right here from uh, Ronan. Oh, yeah. And then I put up the, I put up a PNG of when I, when I pointed. People had a lot of fun with that one, too. Wait, do it together. Hold on, I gotta be, I gotta be more, more forward. Yeah. Okay. So have fun with that now, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Lots of things, uh, little projects for you to work on. Yeah. That's your homework. So now the videos are up. Desexualization of M&Ms and uh, China, bad news from China, they're killing all the hamsters. Yeah. So check both of those out, uh, and we'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.